going to go into a review of what we covered last time. Last time we covered the different diet plans that are out there and the heavy metals and toxins from the environment and all that that slowing us down. So we're going to encapsulate that for you before we jump into the next topic. So take it away. Thanks, Dr. O. <laughs> Let's help you out. Okay, how many were here last month? Oh, excellent. Good to see you. Thanks for coming back. It was kind of depressing last month, wasn't it? How many of you came, went home really scared? Okay, yeah. <laughs> After you listed all that and you thought, oh my gosh, I don't even know what I eat, I don't know what I drink, I don't know what I go outside. I was really depressed. Yeah. I did. So. I'm just here to, you know, pass on. So it's kind of scary. So I'm going to cover a little bit of what we talked about. And then Dr. Denbor and I are going to try to piece together things that we can do everyday life and things that we can change to get healthier. And as we get healthy, we lose weight and all of these things go together. So let's start out. I started talking with diet plans last time. So there are different diet plans I have listed up here. Calorie restriction, which Dr. Denbor had alluded to. A lot of the diet, famous diet plans that are out are the ones that really look at calories. Even a lot of your medical centers will talk about calorie restriction, okay? Calories are great. Everything has a calorie. Do you know what has the most calories? Carbohydrates, protein, or fat? Yes. So why are we on fat-free diets? It's a type of fat, right? So it's a type of carb. It's a type of protein. That's what we want to look at when you're looking at food. Food is a good thing. Glycemic index, there are other programs out there that really are designed around the glycemic index. We use some of these in this office, but we're also teaching you how to pair foods together. What works good together, what keeps the glycemic index down. Weight Watchers, this one um, is really neat because I don't know how many of you listen to the radio or any TV announcements lately, but they're doing a special that you can sign up and it's all internet derived, so you can get support on the internet. The downside that I see of these, a lot of these programs, is who teaches you how to cook? Jenny Craig, they send you food, right? Do they teach you how to cook things that taste good later? Does anybody like cooking? I guess that's the first question. Show of hands. We have a few. The other ones that don't like cooking, is there a reason? Anyone? Don't have time, don't like it. What I run into most is people say, I just don't have time. That's my first one. Second one is nothing tastes good. And the third one is it's a lot easier to eat out, <laughs> which you can understand that, but <laughs> it's not as healthy. So, you know, one of the things that I, I think is most important is actually getting to know your food and understanding what we are eating. So that's where we really see a lot of differences with these programs that what they're doing. The Atkins diet. This is, this is my favorite diet because um, I remember when it first came out and I was watching all of my friends, because obviously I've been thin my life, my whole life, I will admit that. So um, watching all of my friends do this Atkins diet and just eating hamburgers without the buns and all the cheese and the bacon that they want and pork rinds. And I'm thinking, how can that be good? <laughs> that just looks gross. <laughs> But they lost weight. Why? Because you took out one of the most common foods that we eat. Carbohydrates are simple white sugars, right? So you take sugar out, and boy, oh boy, do you lose weight because your body needs to find out how to make sugar through the foods that you're eating. How does it do that? Use some of your fat stores. OK? So the one thing that I wanted to talk to you about that is a little new, so I'm going to jump around, sorry I'm a little ADD this evening as well, is that when fat breaks down in your body, when we exercise and fat breaks down, breaks down from the fat cells and you get triglycerides are what breaks down out of fat. Probably didn't know that. When triglycerides break down, they break down into free fatty acids and glycerols. Glycerol is then broken down by glucagon, which goes into glucose for the brain. Everything else, those free fatty acids, are used for energies by the rest of the cells, OK? So when we work with weight loss, you'll find that the energy that you're using from the fat is toxic. 
So do you remember how we talked last month about how the environment is toxic? When we lose weight, we make our bodies toxic. So we're going to talk. It's like why Rush Limbaugh was hospitalized. Did you hear that? Yeah. Uh, Rush Limbaugh was, mm -hmm. was hospitalized uh, Thursday or something. He what? He was hospitalized. <clears throat> and he lost 60 pounds in the last three months. Oh. And he also was on anti-inflammatories for low back pain. Kind of a lethal combination uh, because you're loading down the liver with plenty of toxins that I'm sure he was uh, releasing from a not so good lifestyle in the past too quickly. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, loading down his kidneys and liver with this medication. And a lot of these medications, they're either COX-1 or COX-2 inhibitors, we call them. Uh, they really uh, affect the cleanup mechanism that we have within our arteries as well. So he may have actually been affecting that to some degree as well. Uh, diagnosis at this point is still uncertain, but he had some severe chest pain, so we can all guess what, where the issue was lying. Um, so apparently he's doing a lot better now, but still it's a warning sign for us that we do not lose weight too quickly, and I'm afraid with Atkins, sometimes that can happen as well. Very much Plus so. Plus you're not giving the body fuel for the detoxification that we need as we release the toxins. Correct. Yeah. The other thing that you see with even the calorie restriction programs, because we don't understand what he was ta he was doing, that he may have been doing a calorie restriction program. And if you don't provide your body with enough calories to support the weight loss, then your body goes into starvation mode, and then you actually use more of your muscle than your fat for energy. So you lose muscle and gain fat. You're working the opposite way. Now the rest of the diets here, they're pretty much all the same. You, they either use um, South Beach Zone Diet and Ornish Diet, all use different um, balances for their food, like 70, 30, 30. Or, I'm sorry, that's wrong. 40, 30, 30. <laughs> 40, 30, 30. Wow. <laughs> she went to school in math. <laughs> Watch out for me. Um, and then the food pyramid, this one I mainly just put up here for is what our, our government puts out for a food program food pyramid of how do we feel that eating healthy is. If you look at the food pyramid previous to last year and last year's food pyramid, there has been a major change, but you can still see where the money lines the pockets. Okay, and for those of you who were not here last month, this is one of the nutrition labels out of one of the medical weight loss programs that they use. This is one, this is a packet of supplementary food that they use. Cannot be, it's not medical food, so it's just a supplementary food. The greatest thing about this is just reading it. I know, I know some patients from, some of you from last month may remember that I said that if you look at the daily percentages, uh, the 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, how often do you find food that way? That's not very often. I, I don't think I've ever run into a pair that tells me it's 25% of everything that I eat. I don't, I don't know if I'd like that pair. It'd probably be very synthetically altered. Um, so what I picked out here is, um, I picked out some different ingredients in this label, and then we have Dr. Denbor give us his pros and cons of what he feels are with these ingredients. Sound good? Ready? Here we go. Strap yourself in. Soy protein isolate. Um, soy protein has really been bashed a lot lately. Um, and there really is no reason for the controversy. Um, soy protein can be very, very beneficial for health, but with a few caveats. Soy protein, it was just revealed by a major study that was conglomerate of all the studies done up until this moment, and another large study released by Harvard four years ago that states that soy protein helps prevent breast cancer, including its recurrence. It is anti-cancerous. It helps survivability from most reproductive and hormone-driven cancers. So the oncologists for the last two decades have been doing us a disservice by saying you cannot have soy in any kind of quantity when you have had one of these cancers. I just wanted to put that to rest because we have some very solid evidence that the soy protein can actually help these conditions. But why is soy protein so controversial? 
It's because most studies do not differentiate between genetically modified GMO and non-genetically modified soy. There is a huge difference, folks, between the two different kinds of soys. They are so different. They smell different. They look different. They taste different. And the allergenic component of the genetically modified soy is 11 times as great as compared to real soy as God created it. This high allergenic component with genetically modified soy creates an inflammatory state within the body with a lot of people. They have a hard time digesting it. And once you are inflamed, we just altered the fuel to air ratio I was talking about in the carburetors and the motorcycles. Things start sputtering. Inflammation is very toxic to metabolism. It slows down something called a mitochondria within your cells. Mitochondria is like your little nuclear fuel site within the cell that just keeps everything humming, keeps everything going, your fuel source. And when that is followed up, then you will gain weight. You are going to create disease. You will become inflamed. And the nuclear source site, of course, was horrible uh, saying with, with mitochondria, but it's a fuel site. So take away, away the word nuclear. Um, uh, so soy protein uh, can be a very good thing. It's one of the uh, important components of something that we utilize, uh, a medical food, the only thing the FDA, the only product that the FDA has been uh, allowed uh, uh, to call medical food. And the reason for it is, is it is the only food out there right now that's been proven to increase muscle mass, reduce body fat, and reduce weight very effectively and safely in clinical trials. Uh, and Ultra Meal does have soy protein isolate, but it's non-GMO organic. There's a big difference with that. Yeah? Okay, next slide. The one thing about that yeah. study that you neglected to mention is mm -hmm. that in the end of the study, they had said that they know there are differences between um, China and the United States on the different types of soy, and that one of the studies was also used soy with and without tamoxifen, which is for breast cancer, and they found that it helped support both with and without tamoxifen. Yeah. So. Yeah. Good point. The other one is a <coughs> whey milk protein concentrate. Okay. Um, this is uh, this is a topic that. Uh, well, how do I get to this? Milk is very inflammatory for those of us over the age of ten. For almost all of us, it's not if you're allergic to it or not. It's more of how well can you tolerate it? Some people can tolerate it. Note I use the word tolerate. Others do not tolerate it. Others have actually become allergic to it. This, of course, I'm not talking about just lactose problems. Some people have trouble with digestion of lactose. That's a lactase uh, enzyme deficiency. Uh, no, I'm talking about an actual inflammatory response that hits the intestinal wall. It is one of the main sources of something we call leaky gut syndrome. Leaky gut syndrome has, sim has been embraced just recently by the gastroenterology associations in this country. They poo-pooed it for literally the last 60 to 70 years. It was first used in 1908. That's where we could trace that word back to, in 1908 in Belgium. Um, leaky gut syndrome is where undigested food particles, especially milk protein, attack the intestinal wall, creating an inflammatory response, creating damage in the intestinal wall. This is a big deal because 70% of our immune system is hooked to our intestinal wall. And when we rile up our immune system, we create inflammation. With inflammation, your metabolism slows. You gain weight, especially around here. You start interfering with how we absorb sugars. You start interfering with a lot of things. But we're talking about weight right now. And any time you alter the digestive system in a negative way, you will gain weight. That's why I was uh, really excited to hear they'd done the first study on just basic hydrochloric acid. That's one of the components in our stomach to help us digest foods. And hydrochloric acid was given to the over 50 crowd. And on average, without any change in exercise or eating, on average, patients lost 12 pounds in one year just by supporting digestion a little bit. We call that Metagest over here. 
anyone over 50 should be supporting their hydrochloric acids because at 50, you're only at 50% of what you were at 20. When you're consuming milk products, you are not breaking it down anymore after 50. In fact, the process starts after age four where we start weaning, just like animals in the animal kingdom have to be weaned, we start moving away from milk products. We've been so programmed by the American Dairy Association, milk is good for you, well, what about my calcium? On and on it goes. Folks, I can guarantee you that we'd be so much better off without these dairy products. Osteoporosis, that's our topic next month, bone health, is not present statistically in countries that do not consume dairy products. So in countries that have, do not have that as part of their traditional culture, there's no osteoporosis. And that's, again, an inflammatory thing that's attacking the bones, but let's keep it to weight. So milk protein concentrate tends to be very dirty, tends to have a lot of contaminants. The, the way we raise milk today has a lot of trace hormones in it, and I wouldn't trust this one one bit. May I add with the, the Metagest, um, one of the things that we want to do when we lose weight is build muscle. And Metagest helps to break down proteins in the stomach, and that's what helps us to build muscle as well. I picked out also artificial flavor. Natural and artificial, you could probably yeah. put both of those in there. I don't think I need to go there too much. <laughs> Uh, except to say that anyone who puts in artificial flavor, the whole product, all, all colors, all of a sudden that whole product becomes suspicious, doesn't it? Uh, it's a new to man chemical. New to man chemicals damage us in one way or another. It affects metabolism in a huge way. And part of the problem, and you'll hear that later on, with the obesity problem and the weight problems that we have and health problems, is that we have too many new to man products in our diet. So, yep. vitamin E acetate. Okay, why would we choose that one? Vitamin E acetate. <laughs> this is synthetic vitamin E. Vitamin E, as it's found in nature, are called mixed tocopherols. Mixed tocopherols, as it's found in plants, have something called synergy where one works with the other, works with the other, works with the other, and that makes the whole compound and has a totally, totally different action than a synthetic vitamin. That is why there's so many studies out there in this country debunking vitamins. For example, just a few years ago, a vitamin A study was uh, put out, and it said vitamin A increases lung cancer. Well, that's funny because I've used vitamin A for a uh, couple of decades here. I was going to say many decades. Uh, for a couple of decades here, um, that uh, for emphysema, for chronic bronchitis, for my chronic uh, patients who tend to catch pneumonia, I put them on a specific vitamin A. Um, and not E. All of a sudden, I could you switch to the next one? <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, and uh, the, the, vitamin, the vitamin A uh, should not be fractionated out from the plant as a single palmitate. No, there's something called the carotenoids. There's over 150 different vitamin A's out there. If you take just one of them, you will have side effects. And this study I was just quoting studied just this one. And yes, you're going to get side effects. You're going to get toxicity. And it, it showed an increase in cancer. Do not ever take synthetic vitamins. Cheap, yes. Bad for you, yes. I'd rather you took nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So same thing with vitamin E. Uh, a very well done Dutch study at University of Leiden, which is considered a very top high-end uh, medical school in, um, in, in Europe. Uh, University of Leiden uh, found that uh, 12 units of the mixed vitamin E took over us, outperformed 1,200 units of this synthetic fractionated vitamin E. So, be aware of your vitamins. Thank you. All right, and I'm going to turn it over to you for a short period of time, and then I will jump back when All right. you are ready. So, there you go, sir. so we, we covered last time also the importance of toxicity, and this is where we left it off, and that's why we all came, went away so depressed, because how can we live? And what, what we went through was just the uh, amazing assault uh, on the human body by toxins in today's society, and they differ a lot 
from the 17th century and before, in that the toxins back then were quite, quite pronounced also, smoky houses and not so clean conditions. But most of those toxins back then were water soluble. And water soluble toxins can also be very evil, but they are easier to get rid of. Most of today's toxins are fat soluble, so they get stored in fat cells, or they come as heavy metals. And you know, they're all evil because fat soluble toxins have to be stored somewhere. At some point, we overwhelm our body with these toxins. I just found out that uh, the European Union just banned more than 10,000 chemicals in makeup. They just passed that legislation. They tried to get the Americans on board with it. We refused. We're still allowing those chemicals to be present in our makeup line. Just a tiny example, I just 10,000 plus chemicals. Just, it's, it's mind boggling. Every month, 3,000 new chemicals get approved here in the United States for use in foods, or in the manufacture of plastics. Why do I pick on plastics? It's very often used all around us as far as storage, as far as drinking, water bottles, and that stuff leaches into our food. PBA has made the head he headlines lately, hasn't it? And its deleterious effect on our health and how it really damages mitochondria, there's that word again, mitochondria function, which really affects how we metabolize how we produce energy, how we really live. And so it's all around us. Medications, it's becoming a really big problem. We're seeing so many traces now in our water supply because of people dumping medications, but also the amount of medications. Um, uh, a, a personal hero of mine uh, passed away two months ago, Abram Hoffer, and he really is the father of functional medicine and uh, was the originator of something called orthomolecular psychiatry. He, in the, he was um, uh, interviewed yet uh, five months ago. He's in his late 90s, still practicing as a psychiatrist, and um, found that uh, for schizophrenia in the early 1950s, he found that niacin, one of the B vitamins, has a cure rate of thir over 30% with schizophrenia, which is incredible. We're talking cure rate here. It's been well documented, has recently been repeated by another study. Uh, it took about 50 years to do that. Um, but uh, this brilliant man was stating about uh, the state of our being, and he said the assault by all these chemicals on us as a race is such a great threat that he was extremely pessimistic about the next generation. Um, being an optimist, I'm not quite that pessimistic because I see incredible change coming through our society. Internet is really making the patients very smart. Uh, they're making us aware. That's why peop uh, people come to seminars like this to educate themselves. Um, and I think eventually, hopefully, the, uh, uh, the assault uh, by too many medications and all the chemicals around us is going to diminish, uh, we can hope. But it's also found its way in our food uh, supply, hasn't it? Um, the um, uh, amount of advertising that our youth gets uh, exposed to, is there anything good advertised food-wise? I really have looked. I haven't been able to find anything. I have not yet seen a great advertisement for broccoli. <laughs> I just haven't seen it. Broccoli. <laughs> and you know, we could spend the entire hour here just discussing broccoli and all of its benefits and how it increases liver function. It doubles liver function for 36 hours with just one serving, functionally. Just broccoli. Yeah? Major antioxidants. Its anti-cancer benefits have been proven. I can go on and on about just one thing. We don't see any of that ad advertised at all. And instead, what we do is we get these advertisers for gummy bears and Skittles. Skittles, thank you, and who, who knows what. <laughs> so food, we're going to talk about that. It has an incredible negative effect. And if all you come away with today is to switch away from new to man chemicals in food to eating real food, mission accomplished. Yeah? If that's all you do. Not even talking calorie change, we're not even talking when or how fast or all those things, other things that matter. Okay, if that's all you come away with. Uh, so it's look at your food. 
if great grandma would not recognize it, do not eat it. <laughs> Pretend she is sitting on your shoulder as you're going through the grocery store. Yep, you've never seen that. Nope, don't do that. <laughs> if it has a label on it, be very suspicious. <laughs> Man has touched it. Yeah? So, plastics, the PBA in there, it's becoming a disaster. Heavy metals. Heavy metals is a generational disaster that is upon us. It's not whether you have heavy metals poisoning you right now. The question is how much. Because mom had it. And her mother had it. This really started back in the 1920s when we started dumping heavy metals into the atmosphere and into our water supply. Baby gets 20% of mom's heavy metals in that tiny little body. So we get an increased concentration, which then gets passed on to the next generation plus the influence of the increasing dirty environment. By the time you come to this generation, our heavy metal count is so high compared to just three generations ago. Even in us healthy folks, it is absolutely shocking. It is a crisis that is upon us, and it is affecting our brains. Ever wonder why we see so much ADD? Ever wonder why the autism is so high? Alzheimer's is skyrocketing. Ever wondering why all these autoimmune diseases are just going through the roof? Even in my short lifetime, I've seen an incredible increase in that. It is because of this compounding of generation upon generation upon generation. And the time to do something about it is now, because if you, especially as a female, as a woman, in childbearing years, increase your health, you are increasing your detoxification ability, you are decreasing your toxins in your system, and that is going to have a tremendous effect on the next generation. We have a real responsibility here to the next generation. And even if you're past childbearing years, you can do an incredible amount of good. Heavy metals, big topic. We detoxify uh, oh, detection. Let's go, let's go there just for a sec. We, we covered detection of heavy metals last time. And basically what we concluded, uh, we went through all the various ways to do it. Urine seems to be the best. It's been around since the 1930s. We've come back to it. It's cheap. It's effective. We can check it for 11 different heavy metals. We do it on site here. It is very accurate. Water contamination, that's a big one. Um, I saw Dr. Stacy doing a little research on, on the yes. water. And wh what kind of filtration systems did you think was best? Well, I looked at the different, the most common filtration systems that we use today, Brita water filters. Mainly the pitcher filters are what I see most patients asking me about. And then I also looked into reverse osmosis. Um, the main difference, of course, everybody knows about distilled water. Those are out there, there's a magnetic there's a UV radiation, there's ionized water, all of those. But I spent most of my time on Brita and the reverse osmosis. Brita, the great thing about it, it's a carbon filter. Does anybody know carbon filters are made out of coconut husks? Thought that was very interesting. Did not have a clue. But the carbon filter, what it does is it reduces chlorine. Does not completely take it out, but it does reduce chlorine does not touch fluoride. They want to leave fluoride in there. They're still under the impression that fluoride is good for our health and our teeth. We disagree. Very much so. It also reduces copper, mercury, and cadmium. If I remember correctly on the third one, but I know it's copper, mercury, and cadmium. Yeah, right, about how much did that reduce it? They did not give a percent. Hmm. But the new thing, because he was talking about medications and pharmaceuticals, how they've been passing into our groundwater and our drinking water, Brita has put out that they believe that they're taking out 96.7% of the pharmaceuticals out of the water with just the carbon filters in the pitcher, which is great. That's awesome. We don't want all that junk in our water. Um, the reverse osmosis system and price break between a, a pitcher system 20 to 30 dollars for the pitcher depending on how many um, filters you buy 20 to 40 dollars for the filters depending on how many and how big your family is how often you use them reverse osmosis i mainly looked under on the under the counter ones because those would 
seem to be what most people would be interested in using because a whole house reverse osmosis system seemed astronomical for most patients. Reverse osmosis, the great thing about it, it pretty much takes everything out. It's very similar to distilled water. So distilled water has no minerals in it. It also takes out all of your heavy metals, cadmium, arsenic, lead, um, giardia, cryptosporium, which are mainly your bacteria in the water. Oh boy, chlorine, fluoride, anything that seemed to be toxic, it pulled out of the water. Now, reverse osmosis systems have gotten smart and they realize that people don't want all the minerals out of their water because they know that that mineral is important to the body. So they started selling an artesian water tap plan. And what that one does is adds calcium and magnesium back in. Now it's not all the trace minerals and the minerals that you would need in your water, but at least it's a start and it's a very healthy water. That's the one nice thing about it. So there are downsides. Um, the under the counter costs anywhere between three and $600 depending on which one you do. And you would really only need to change the filter once a year. And it's about, depending on which filter you're using, $50 to $100 for that year. So not too terrible. No. Let alone fact, I was looking at contaminants of food. Did you know that your food, by the time you get it onto your table, if you buy vegetables at the grocery store, it's touched a minimum of 25 times? What? Touched by people a minimum of 25 times. Hmm. And you never know what they have in their hands. I'll stick to my own garden. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, what health issues are standing in the way of your proper weight? Here we jump into new material. One of which, we're going to cover a bunch of them, is decreased metabolism to one, toxicity and health syndromes. Two different topics for now. <coughs> toxicity. Where is toxicity coming from? And I just made a jump that toxicity equals weight gain, and you're just going to have to take me on faith on that one. There's a lot of studies there that show that toxicity causes inflammation, which slows down metabolism and creates obesity. Okay, insulin resistance, which I'm going to talk about, thyroid conditions, all that very much associated with toxicity. So just ride with me on this one. Identifying and removing risky lifestyle behaviors. Now, what could that be? <laughs> you know, it could be as simple as chronically sleep deprivation. This chronic sleep deprivation. That is risky lifestyle behavior. Because for every hour of sleep that you lose in a night, your immune system will decrease by about 30% for the first hour, another 20% for the next one. So by the time you've lost an average of two hours of sleep, your immune system is on half of its normal function. Your immune system is kind of the clean up go-to guy or gal, and if your immune system is irritated, you are going to go to a more inflammatory state it will contribute to obesity. And there's more than a few studies that show that sleep deprivation and obesity go together. In fact, some of the newer studies with the newest fad that's sweeping through West Michigan, and that is the pap machine. You're all nervous. Everybody's got this thing going with the sleep and mm -hmm. sleep apnea and blah, blah, blah. It seems like we have something going here. Um, but what, what, what happens, and I'm not pooing it because some people have really benefited by this, but one thing that's noted with some of these studies, we get the patients sleeping better they start losing weight in a very effective, fast way. So that's a risky lifestyle behavior. Um, there's uh, things like over drinking. How about just plain old booze? There's the word for this, beer gut, comes from a reason, right? Beer is very high on the glycemic or sugar index. The sugar that's in beer, maltose, is about one and a half times the negative effect on your body as compared to regular sugar. A lot of beers are worse for you sugar-wise than pop is. It's a risky lifestyle behavior. I can just hit that one and you'd be still here tomorrow morning at 7. We're not going to do this. So lots of them out there. Contaminants, toxins, toxicants. We're going to talk about that in a bit. Pathogens and endotoxins. When you have a chronic infection going in your tooth, and it's going on undetected, which a lot of them are, it's just burying itself slowly underneath, and there's this slow cavity, 
it really affects your overall inflammation. Yes, we get to get other things from it. It's documented, heart disease, autoimmune diseases in general. But it is a huge contributor to obesity for some people because all these inflammatory signaling agents at some point have to be stored somewhere. Fat cells, the go-to guy or gal. Yeah. Um, occupational exposures and stress. Stress, folks, is huge. It affects something, we're gonna talk about that, the pituitary thyroid adrenals axis or PTO axis. Um, stress makes us fat. It's amazing what vacation will do for some people. I just, this morning, started one of my first patients at seven o'clock this morning. Comes back, we did, just did a repeat BIA, which checks your muscle mass and body fat and metabolism and other various things in a very accurate way. It's called bioimpedance analysis, or BIA for short. And you know what? He went to Hawaii, lucky him, for two weeks. He comes back, he said he'd been eating not so good. He was kind of afraid to do the BIA. He had lost six pounds. Mm -hmm. He said his gut just felt like it was gone. His muscle mass went up 2% of his body weight. Rest. It's amazing what a change. Now, what, he, was, he was only 40 years old, and, and that makes a difference as well, of course. But still, wow, I was so impressed what just rest did for him. So getting rid of stress is a big one. Occupational exposures. Um, we have a lot of patients that come in from tool and die uh, kind of places, and wow, are they exposed to contaminants? And do they have trouble with weight? Because they're pretty active overall. And a lot of them have pretty decent muscle mass. We have a big problem here, folks. Toxicity in a very concentrated uh, degree. So occupational exposures, absolutely. One of the biggest contaminants, or the highest percentage of contaminants up and above tool and die, hairdressing salons, yeah? And dental hygienists, heavy metals. Even worse than dentists. They have twice the amount of heavy metals in them and wow, does it affect them. Occupational exposure, isn't it? Yeah. Bad or toxic relationships. This one is shocking to me, how that affects patients' health. I dare say that a bad or toxic relationship is as bad or maybe even worse than just having a junk food diet. Emotions create havoc with health. The emotion-health connection is so powerful, so underestimated. Bad or toxic relationships, I have seen miracle cures with this. I have a patient, very Italian, always waving his hands and very expressive, now he talks, and, dog, I love you, you know, and he hugs, hugs me, and I'm, I'm Dutch and kind of reserved, and one of like, yeah. And, 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 and so, so, so he comes in and he says, Doc, you just cured me this ache here and here and here. And he had been through a litany of things, including his sugar levels being improved. Just incredible. And I could hardly believe it. I said, wow. I didn't know what to tell him. I, I said, let's do BIA. So I broke the rules. We're supposed to schedule the BIAs. We did a BIA right on the spot. And sure enough, his BIA numbers were incredibly different in just six weeks' time. And I said, well, what's happening? He says, I'm getting married next week. <laughs> a little bit older gentleman, and he was, he was getting married, had fallen in love, it was kind of a quick process. Uh, <laughs> and it is absolutely amazing what a difference that made. So yeah, this is a big one. Dehydration sources. If you are dehydrated, your metabolism stops. Folks, water's cheap. It is one of the most common nutritional deficiencies that we encounter here in this office. We do the BIA, and dehydration is so unbelievably common, and it is so unbelievable the results you get just with hydration. Books have been written about it. A really neat textbook is written by a researcher he had an MD, PhD, who was a hostage in one of the Middle Eastern countries, and the only medicine that he could use for on fellow prisoners there was water. And 
he wrote a whole textbook with just all these cases that he cured with water, all the different kinds of things that he could do with it. Water is potent. Coca-Cola believes within the next couple years that the water sales will overtake all of their other beverage sales. Wow, good. Mm -hmm. And I suppose they're bottling water for us. They're dance on ear. Uh, yeah. I didn't hear Okay. That. Yeah. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is starting to say their water sales are starting to overtake uh, their Coca-Cola sales, which I think, <laughs> I think is just terrific. I think it's just terrific. So excess electromagnetic fields. This one's been kind of hush hush lately, hasn't it? Do you remember when cell phones were so bad and we couldn't hold it to our ear because of brain tumors and on and on and on and on? Well, you know what? That research is still out there. And for example, in Sweden, they just passed a law two weeks ago that makes it mandatory for cell phone manufacturers to include the earpiece and the talk piece whenever they sell a cell, sell a cell phone because they do not want people holding a cell phone for electromagnetic radiation reasons, including public safety too, of course. In fact, they've made it a law for those 12 years and younger not to talk on cell phones unless those headpieces are, are, uh, are, uh, are, 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 are done, used. Um, looking for the right word there. Um, and, and it's just really important. Electromagnetic fields have a profound effect on us. It's a little bit sketchy science for some of it yet, but we do know there's profound differences in metabolism for those people living near power lines. That has been proven. So where, where are some of these toxicity sources come from? Heavy metals. Muskegon, our cement plants, throws up an incredible amount of mercury in the air. We are downstream from them. If you look at a map of the United States that the FDA has put out for us, with red being the most toxic area for heavy metals, West Michigan is deep red compared with just a couple other areas of the United States. It's gotten to the point that our own DNR right here in Michigan says no fish is to be consumed from our streams, our ponds, and our lakes here in Michigan by kids or woman of childbearing age. It's gotten really out of control. Our heavy metals are way out there. Our groundwater is contaminated with it. It's not just in the air, our water, our fish, our food supply. It's really depressing. We could move, or we could raise our defenses against this and get so healthy that our metabolic machinery is just working because God created us with the ability to grab heavy metals and get rid of it. We do have that ability. And lifestyle change can increase metal excretion by 86% in just 36 hours. It is phenomenal the power that we have in our hands just with the tools available to us. Heavy metals is a depressing topic because it has such a long half-life. In other words, it takes so long for nature to, de to destroy it. But what were we thinking when we started putting this stuff in our mouths? With your silver amalgam fillings. Silver. It really is mercury. It's still being used today. What were we thinking when we were putting it in thermometers and then playing with it as kids, there are nice little beads going around the floor. Remember doing that? I did. Yeah? What were we thinking? Because all this knowledge has been, we've known about this for so long, and we've just underestimated its, its effect on future generations, I suspect. What were we thinking when we were putting it as far as, par as transformers and computers? and all the elements that are still being used today and people are just casually dumping and all it goes into our groundwater. So the gut lift function is absolutely critical for healthy weight. If I could point to one thing as far as the organ system goes, gut liver function is it. It seems to be very central to healthy metabolism. If your liver does not work well you are not detoxifying well, among with, along with many, many other things. And other weird things start happening. If your liver is irritated, your cholesterol shoots up. Your hormones go wacky. 
your neurotransmitter levels will do strange things. Yeah, it's related to many things. At last count, as far as we know, the liver has over 450 different functions that we've identified, probably way more than that. But it's, it's a really a multitasker, and it is under assault in today's society with what we eat. Can you imagine eating one of those hamburgers from McDonald's? I, I, I personally can't, but, but, but the, just the smell is just really strange to me. But, but the ammonia in there, the things that happen to the meat, I'm not going to go into it. It'll just, no, I'm, I'm not going to go into it. No, but, no. <laughs> but it really is truly depressing what, what, what actually happens to meat. It is really not meat. It's a meat product. They're not even allowed to call it meat. And it has no resemblance to the real thing. It has absolutely no resemblance. Um, well, I'll give you this one little snippet. I, 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 I've had a, a bit of a colorful youth, and, and one of the things that I've, I've done as a youth when I was about 17 or so is work in the stockyards. And, and it was a great experience because it taught me hard work and, and uh, many other things. Um, and, and, but one of the things that is in stockyards is this pervasive smell. Yeah, you can smell it for kilometers away. Just, it's all over the place. It's like a dust. I can put my nose up to one of those hamburgers and smell the stockyards. It's got the same smell. Ugh. You can just imagine all the things that are in there. No, don't go near it. <laughs> Ultimately, what I wanted to say with that, it's really hard on gut and liver function. It really is. There Medications. Really, yeah. me, if you don't mind. There really aren't many diseases known to man that don't have a liver dysfunctional component with yeah. it. Yeah, it seems like every century has got its own bunch of diseases, uh, and really the 21st century diseases has at its center the gut-liver area. Uh, it's 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 on a tremendous assault. It's related to a lot of things, including autoimmune diseases. Um, in fact, uh, in, in in Europe, uh, uh, depression is called uh, a, a gut-related disease. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis is definitely a gut-related disease. Autoimmune diseases in general are gut-related. Eczema is an autoimmune disease. It really is gut, a gut disease. The skin is only showing what the gut is feeling. So, but back to obesity, because it goes that way with this discussion. Medications. Um, I had a patient come in from Iowa. Um, this is about a year and a half ago. Current record holder. 24 different medications. Mm. Yeah, 24 different medications. I have multiple patients that come in that are on at least a dozen medications. That is not at all uncommon. Yeah, 12 medications is not uncommon. Uh, at age 67, the average amount of medications that a patient is on is seven. How can we do that to our aged population? Because it really is an uncontrolled experiment, folks. It is an uncontrolled experiment because what's happening is every medication has a list of side effects. <laughs> Add two of them and you're going to have more side effects. Do three, you cannot calculate how the interactions work anymore. Add to that the uniqueness of every individual and the uniqueness of their environment and the uniqueness of their emotions as well as their genetics. Uh, I mean, I can go on and on. It becomes an uncontrolled experiment. And I realize that us in the health business are forced sometimes, and especially in emergency situations, to get a control over a patient to get to save their life. I recognize that. But as far as long-term health, let's not keep these poor patients on that many medications, and let's try to wean them off of it and get them healthy. And we do that by teaching them lifestyle change, by teaching patients what we're, what we're talking about today, and what we teach our patients really in lifestyle therapy that Tina teaches, or exercise therapy that Leah teaches, and what we try to teach our patients. And sometimes it takes a bit of doing. I just had a patient come in this morning. He was, uh, he's been coming to me for about 15 years, and I had recommended a book that a friend of mine wrote. It's called Ultra Metabolism by Mark Hyman. And it's funny because I, I've been secretly writing a book at home, and I've got a bunch of chapters, and I just finished my, my chapter on rheumatoid arthritis and its relationship to the gut. And this is a bunch of years ago. And then I read Ultra Metabolism, and I threw away. That's it. He beat me to it. It really is an awesome book uh, because it really encapsulates a lot of what we do here in this office 
uh, and Mark Hyman has done a great job with that. But he had just finished reading this book, Ultra Metabolism, I recommend it to him. He says, Doc, all the things you've been telling me, it finally makes sense. And I was slightly offended. Uh, but I'm absolutely thrilled because he's putting it together and he put together a step-by-step -step process. Uh, he says, uh, I started with my coffee. I reduced it from six cups a day to one cup a day. And he stopped putting in cream and sugar in it. I can, I can only imagine the amount of calories he's reducing right there, right? Uh, as well as the uh, adrenal assault and kidney and who knows what else. Um, and, and he's going to start moving more towards whole foods. And he's really, really excited. He made his wife read it, and uh, she's excited too, luckily. And, and they're go going to get on track with it. How I got to that for medications, I don't know. But um, uh, uh, medications, I feel, is a major problem, and uh, we need to do something about it. Let's just pick, for example, antibiotics. Antibiotics save lives, right? But they're also overutilized, right? We, we know that. Uh, for example, the common ear infection, uh, uh, depending what study that you read, but between 93 and 97% of ear infections tend to be viral, yet uh, antibiotics uh, are very often utilized, I feel, to placate or placate, placate the patient. Um, uh, and uh, so that they walk out of the office with some, something in their hands. Uh, uh, it's doing the patient a disservice because most of them are viral. And what did we just do? We altered the gut environment, didn't we? We just changed the good flora, the good bacteria, and that changes digestion. And we could set that poor patient up later on for a lifetime of obesity. Now, I'm drawing a pretty extreme line here, but it's only to make the point, especially with repeat antibiotics, that could contribute to obesity. So that's just one example. Doc? Yeah. Do the medications make you think by any chance that, you know, we have had prolonged our, our lifespan through medication and, and really in the long term we're going to shorten our lifespan again through the medication? Yeah, uh, especially when, uh, since the 1940s when antibiotics came out, um, uh, obviously against infectious diseases, it, it made a huge, huge inroad. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally feel that uh, hygiene is actually even a greater uh, contributor to our, our lifespan. Um, but um, um, I, uh, it's also estimated now that uh, the generation that's been born in the last five years and from here on out is going to be the first generation in history with major wars excluded that is going to live less long than a generation before. So we do expect that longevity is going to be on a decline if current trends hold. Yeah, no question about it. So our water sources are contaminated. Uh, luckily, Dr. Stacy uh, explained to us ways that we can combat that. Do not drink water out of plastic bottles. Mm -mm. Okay. So health syndromes that really affect weight. And with weight, I'm, I'm using this very general. I'm using, because weight and weight and weight can be different. One gal at 180 pounds can be very fit and muscular, whereas another gal at 110 pounds could be very fat. We call that skinny fat. Yeah, no muscle, fat only. Amazing how many of those we see actually. So both uh, the skinny fat has less health potential than the 180 pounder, which is all muscle. So do note that we just are using the word weight loosely there. Um, but one of the top health syndromes, what's really under attack in today's society is the PTA axis, pituitary, thyroid, adrenal. That's what that stands for. Our adrenals are so stressed. And everybody says, yeah, stress, there's lots of stress. Society is accelerating and we've got so many things to do in Christmas shopping. That is a stressor, yes. But I'm talking especially about stress from toxins, from how we eat, how quick we eat. Physical stressors are a stressor also and really affects the adrenals in a huge way. So the adrenals and thyroid work together. Yeah, that's why this is called systems biology. That's the European word for functional medicine, by the way, systems biology. Because everything works together in systems. I like that word. Systems biology explains to you how the pituitary, thyroid, and adrenals really are one unit. They talk together. So when the adrenals are stressed, eventually it'll stress your thyroid. And most of us know that when the thyroid gets stressed, 
weight goes goofy. Stress is huge. Initially, by the way, when you get stressed, you might lose weight uh, because things get overstimulated, but eventually you get burnout. So important to keep that in mind. Gut health. Your gut, I've thi I think I've discussed that one enough, um, but I'll just, well, we're gonna hit it with one more other thing. It, there are so many cases of Crohn's that we see, and we see them from all over. Crohn's, um, irritable bowel, uh, ulcerative colitis, you know, that whole family, uh, it is amazing what you can do just by switching to a whole food diet. Make sure you give them adequate digestive enzymes and take away offending agents. For some of them, a lot of them, it's gluten. Dairy can be an offending agent. For others, it's other goofy things that you never thought of. I have one patient who seems like he, I did, we did a, sensitive, a food sensitivity test on him, and most vegetables he's very sensitive to. He was delighted. Um, uh, you do come across these goofy, goofy cases, but most of them it's gluten and or dairy, soy, citrus, nuts, those types of things. Corn. And talk about corn, that, that jumps to something, because corn syrup is really very much behind this whole wave of obesity. Mm -hmm. Corn syrup, I'll just say this about it, is about five times as bad as sugar, as a, its effect on the body. It does not affect our satiety hormone. It's a problem. Satiety means feeling full. It gives you the munchies. Just like NutraSweet and artificial sweeteners do. It gives you the munchie, munchies. It's a major contributor to our obesity problems today, folks. Corn syrup and also artificial sweeteners. I'd much rather, if you're given a diet pop versus a regular pop with real sugar in it, get those in Canada. <laughs> or in the Asian food aisle, or no, the Mexican yes. aisle. And yes, <laughs> and Cost Plus has it in yep. their Italian sodas. Um, <laughs> So in either case, I have kids, so uh, we, we do have to shop these things once in a while. But, it, but in either case, uh, uh, the artificial sweetener is just so bad for you. And then corn syrup is right there behind it. Uh, try to stay away from it. It causes inflammation. Um, so food sensitivities, allergies affect gut health, inflammation, it really is one unit. It really is one unit. And inflammation is really ultimately what kills us, isn't it? It attacks our arteries. Inflammation can damage our DNA, which can contribute to certain cancers, can't it? Inflammation attacks our joints. It attacks our skin. These little lines, these furrows in through here, that is a stress within the body due to inflammation, oxidative stress, destroying the material underneath the skin, causing the, the, uh, the wrinkle lines. So. Inflammation is present in all of us. The question is, how much? And what are you doing to minimize it? Hormone imbalance, this is huge. I find it more in women uh, than in men, although men are definitely not excluded. Uh, males right now, by the way, those in their 30s are in an epidemic of infertility, just absolute epidemic. It's happening in just the last five years. And we do think, we don't know for sure yet, we do think that plastics are behind it. Yeah, we do think. It's still, a little, it's still a little loose, so don't quote me on that one yet, but I do feel that that's probably going to be proven right, along with many other things, like usual. But hormone imbalance for women, wow, what an effect it has. And women, when they're stressed, their hormones are going to be so off, because adrenals are responsible for hormone metabolism. When the liver are assaulted, Hormones go to the liver to be metabolized. To, they go there to die. The active has to be changed to inactive. Happens in the liver. It's called methylation. When that's not happening, then you get, go, get byproducts from hormones called 3,4-quinones. 3,4-quinones are very toxic, very pro-cancerous, causes PMS. And these toxic compounds have to go into your fat cells. Yeah? Um, Estrogen dominance equals those big thunder thighs. That's estrogen dominance. Yeah? Insulin resistance is more over here. Insulin is also a hormone. And that is going to be covered down through here. Emotional health, I sort of talked about that already. Uh, stress, obviously tied to that. Again, huge effect 
on, um, uh, on the adrenals. And stress, by the way, makes you gain weight right here. That's stress. Yeah. And a few years ago, when it was another fab, we had all these compounds to reduce cortisol. Remember that? Well, cortisol is behind this whole obesity issue because cortisol makes you less responsive to insulin, creating insulin resistance, sometimes called syndrome X. Dysglycemia, reactive hypoglycemia, sugar dysregulation. It's all really the same thing. And yes, can lead to adult onset diabetes, which is now occurring in kids. Adult onset diabetes. I have, a, I have 10 year olds coming in with adult onset diabetes, folks. Mm -hmm. It's because they're just drinking pop and sugars in just such incredible quantities. It's never, ever been seen before, ever. So stress is a huge one. Insulin resistance, I kept it last for a reason because this is epidemic. Insulin resistance is present in 40% of us. Virtually every patient who has any kind of weight problem has some component or great component of insulin resistance. Insulin is a hormone. It disrupts other hormones. It wreaks havoc in virtually every organ system in the body. It is so pro-inflammatory. It can even be behind chest pain because high insulin spike can cause constriction of an artery. It can be behind that swollen knee because it affects your inflammatory response. It certainly is behind the fat that is around here. It is behind high triglycerides in your cholesterol. It makes your cholesterol shoot up. We have a patient present here who just proudly presented to me her latest cholesterol numbers. She's been doing lifestyle therapy with Tina for uh, since June or so. And, and, and she was part of it with every right because she did lose 33 pounds or so in the last seven, eight months, which she was exceedingly glad with. I was more glad with the increase in muscle mass and the fact she was getting a waist. Yeah, that was, that was really, uh, our, our focus is not really on weight, but on getting healthy. But that was one thing. But uh, her cholesterol since then, we have uh, three different ones, has been cut in half. It was approximately 350, your total cholesterol, it's now 172. Her triglycerides, which were around 250, are now at 155. Still high, but I, I, I like the trend. Her HDL has climbed tremendously. And here's the golden, gra the, the, uh, golden grail, yeah? The LDLs, which are difficult to move. LDL is very toxic. LDL, you, it's, it's just a, a, an inflammatory part of cholesterol that we do not like, less than half. Her numbers are not perfect, but they're getting there. And she quoted me what her doctor said about six, seven months ago. But she says, well, don't bother with food. It won't change your numbers. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, and she, 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 she said that to me with a smirk because she was so determined to prove him wrong and good for her. But that's the attitude that's still out there, folks. Yes, you can change it. And cholesterol and weight go together, don't they? Weight goes together with your arthritis, doesn't it? And with your autoimmune disorders. That's why we don't want you to do the Rush Limbaugh, jo Rush Limbaugh job and just go into calorie restriction on some super secret diet and just lose weight. It's not about losing weight, it's about getting healthy and getting your metabolism going and having changes like this occur or your thyroid numbers improve or your blood pressure drop tremendously. So let's set up your action plan. <coughs> Identify your health challenges. Do you have cold hands? You might have a thyroid problem or dry skin or hair falling out. Is your cycle doing goofy things? Do you have more PMS than usual? Is breast tenderness all of a sudden becoming a problem? Are you seeing emotional ups and downs that you wonder, well, where is that coming from? This doesn't just happen for no reason. This is not a Prozac deficiency, folks. There's something going on that's making you change. Is there just this startling awake at three o'clock every morning? It takes about a half hour to an hour before you go back to sleep. 
that's low adrenal function causing something called nocturnal hypoglycemia at night, which just is a fancy word for low blood sugar. Yeah? That's adrenal dysfunction. That's major. Are you gaining weight right here? Did you know your increase in uh, cardiovascular syndromes is increased exponentially with that? That's just one of the things, but there's many others. They're now tying it to Alzheimer's in a big way. Alzheimer's is nothing more than a brain on fire, and it is fueled by obesity. Alzheimer's, we guesstimate that 40% of our elderly is going to be afflicted by it within the next 30 years. 40%, I think, that is just an absolutely scary number. And yes, that could be the downfall of us economically, those types of things. So it's really important to act on some of these things now. So identify emotional hang-ups, um, toxic relationship, fix it or do something. Um, do we have an emotional hang-up with, with work? I, I, I remember a patient, he said, um, we, we were struggling with a lot of health issues, including obesity, and his partner was gone, and that was just a normal thing uh, for two weeks doing his travels, a big business, and he told me, he came in that morning very upset, he said, I think I now recognize what my problem is. I said, what? He said, my partner's car was sitting right in the car in the parking lot, I pulled in beside it, and I immediately got heartburn. He says, I, I didn't realize it, but I had been free of heartburn for the last two weeks. Gut dysfunction, right? All kinds of other syndromes attached to that, including his weight problem. So we decided to buy his partner out. <laughs> you should see this guy go right now. He is slim, lean, and mean, and living like, life like he never has before. I'm really proud of him. Identified his problem, did something about it, and moved on. Oh, if life was always that simple, of course, that would be great. But, but this is really an important topic. Um, I had another one that uh, came in, and he said, I just, every time I, I uh, use a factory worker, he absolutely hated his job. And they said, every time I drive up, I just get this gut-wrenching feeling, and he went through all the emotional things, and we were dealing with a lot of, lot of issues. I said, well, I really can't get you to like your work, can I? He said, no. I said, well, what about if we change the context and give you some control? Because I think what you're lacking is a sense of control, that you're in this helpless situation. You got to do it because you got to support your family, blah, blah, blah. But how about if I told you that you could quit? He says, well, I can't do that. I said, yes, you can. He says, you can quit your job. He said, but what would I do then? He says, well, you can always figure that out later. But you can quit. You do have that ability to quit. And he gave me just a really weird look and didn't say anything. And he looked at me like I'd lost my mind. Um, but he did come back to me a few months later and really thanked me profusely for that little comment that I made because it gave him a sense of control. He says, you know what? I can quit. And there's nothing you can do about it. It gave him some sense of control, as silly as it might be. Because we do have control over situations, even if we don't think we do. So, identify emotional hang-ups. So, you really, this is a hard one, and you really got to be honest with yourself. And uh, why am I doing what I'm in? What, what I'm, I'm doing? Why am I sabotaging myself? Yeah, important stuff. And recruit your support team. Do not do this alone. Your support team is absolutely critical. And powerful tools at your disposal that we have developed for you here at DBC is one lifestyle therapy. Lifestyle therapy has been a centerpiece of this practice for at least 15 years. It's uh, been refined continuously, utilizing what we uh, what we have found to work best and also what science has worked best. We're very uh, science research oriented and lifestyle therapy has been subjected to clinical trials utilizing the medical foods that we do and that's why we get results like this. We have clinical trials proving some of the things that we utilize our, our, uh, for our patients, one of which is Ultramil, the other one is Ultramil Plus for those that have high cholesterol. Ultramil 360. You got some handouts there, Tina? I'm just saying we have information. Okay, thanks. And, and um, uh, Ultramil 360 is for those with a gut uh, that uh, shows insulin resistance. And we have clinical trials showing dramatic improvements in just 12 weeks. Lowering of blood pressure, 
in a very significant way. Lowering of cholesterol levels, an average of 40% in those that it's really high. And lowering of inflammatory markers through blood work, and these have been published in major peer-reviewed medical journals. And we're proud of that because we don't use fly-by-night type of things. I like to stick to what's been proven. So medical foods are really critical. And to get patients out of gate, out of the gate, um, Tammy, you said you were doing for every three ultra meals, two ultra meals you buy, you get one at no charge, which is uh, a first for us uh, that, that we're able to do that and happy to hand that to our patients, which gives you a complete meal for less than two bucks which I think is incredible with all the clinical benefits uh, that go with it. But just food alone is not enough. enough. That's why we do lifestyle therapy. Tina, wave your hand. <laughs> Tina does lifestyle therapy for our patients and uh, worked with this one particular patient among many others. And it's been a wildly uh, popular program because what we do is we teach patients what to do, identify the weak spots. I had a neat one, I didn't tell you about that today. Um, but um, she said, you know, Doc, you talked to me about a year for that one to, 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 make, to make that role. I says, ah, what can she teach me? Maybe it's a good thing I didn't tell you. And, and uh, she uh, says, you know, I'm so glad that you finally made me do it. Because one, there's accountability. Number two, I did learn how to cook. Pre like foods that I didn't like before. And she's now exercising very regularly, getting lean and mean, and getting some results that to her are just astounding. And I just, I, it just, I love that because we're producing change that is permanent. And that is, that is critical. And we try to do it on our own sometimes, but we need a, a support team. Uh, lifestyle exercise is uh, uh, Leah. And Leah, are you here somewhere? Leah can't wave her hand. She's waving out there somewhere. But Leah uh, was uh, at one point uh, a team captain of her soccer team at Calvin. Uh, has a degree in exercise physiology and uh, is uh, uh, able to identify for us what the patient's needs are through testing. And then with doctor's assistance, with Dr. Stacy or myself guiding, say this patient needs to do this and this, this is where the heart rate should be, teach them the exercise protocols that they need to do with whatever they like to do. And that's critical, folks, with what you like to do. Because if you're gonna do something that you absolutely hate doing, you're not gonna sustain it. Your exercise program, which I have not talked about, but is also an important component of health, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Needs to consist of something that is sustainable for you. And it's our job to try to identify that. For myself, it's playing games and doing fun things with my kids. Playing soccer, skiing, cross country, bicycling, trying to outgun my kids. Uh, it's, it's, it's just, it's just a blast, and yes, you can become fit that way. I personally hate weightlifting, but I consider it important enough that I do do it twice a week, very intensely, so that way I don't have to do so long of it. And I see incredible benefits, and because those incredible benefits I can feel, I'll do them because I see the benefits. So not all of exercise can be fun, but it should be mostly fun. I feel strongly about that. Yeah. So exercise gives you benefits that are almost immediate as far as how you feel. Within a week, you will get an increased energy. Yeah, Tina. Just a personal testimony for me. Yeah. And I I'm very much a food-oriented person. It's mm -hmm. getting me excited about healthy food. But getting me excited about exercise is not my nature. I talked to Leo for five minutes and he has been committed to running a 5K and being convinced that I can actually do these things and that I actually want to. And she's just, she's just very excited about herself and so it's contagious. Yeah. So if you get a chance to work with her, she's amazing. 5K, here you come. I know, that's cool. That's awesome. <laughs> yep. X, uh, so, so lifestyle exercise. No, that's what we're calling it. So, uh, so what we're doing is, is, um, getting patients motivated to change. And you know, food can be so much fun. And it can be so encompassing for a family. Can I share with you what I made with my kids yesterday? And um, what, uh, it doesn't have to be difficult. My family came together for Christmas. All seven of us were home and that's, that's wonderful uh, because uh, my uh, youngest son uh, is uh, moving on to Amsterdam uh, this week to go to Free University of Amsterdam and, and pursue education there. Uh, my oldest son is now back in Chicago 
uh, Lucas has just graduated from Calvin, so we're really in transition, so we really treasure the time when we're together. I have five kids, the other ones are in, are in, are in grade school and high school. And, and, and um, so I sent Lucas out, says, you know, we, let, let's just pull something together. So he went out and proudly presented to me some tuna. He says, wow, Dad, look at this. Look how fresh it is. And I said, yeah, that's quite a good piece. And some wild caught salmon. Um, I myself went to Sam's Club of all places and got one of those big bins in plastic, unfortunately, uh, of uh, organic salad, all the different pieces together. And my wife had some frozen fruits from the farmer's market yet, and she gotten some pineapple from who knows where. And um, what I did is I, th I, I threw the fish on the grill. Uh, Matteo put together some beans from the freezer with some weird spices, cursamen, and he's into Indian spices, uh, and uh, uh, prepared all that. And we threw that, chopped it up, threw it on the bed of, of salad, along with all the fruits, and then sprinkled balsamic vinegar and olive oil on it. Whole meal didn't take very long. It was a little more expensive than usual because I don't often buy tuna but it was worth it. And it was an absolutely terrific meal. And look how healthy that was. And what a way to celebrate food. The color, the preparation time together, the excitement of the kids. Wow, look at that. And even my eight-year-old was kind of looking, oh, I think I can pick out this piece and that piece and that piece. Uh, and that's a challenge, but believe me. So, so you can do this. You have to use a little imagination and start enjoying it and be daring about it. Real food equals incredible health benefits. Folks, we don't ever want you to go on a diet. Diet is temporary. That's all the stuff that Dr. Stacy went through. Atkins diet, does it lose weight? Yes. Improve health? No. We can go on and on about some of the negatives that it causes. And I can go on and on. Dr. Um, Pritikin did, or no, Dean Ornish did a great job with really super low fat, low fat uh, diet, which showed opening up of uh, blood vessels, but forgot to include in his data that it inc caused an incredible increase in autoimmune diseases because of fat deficiencies. Yeah, it created a vitamin A, D, E, and K deficiency, which was documented. These extreme things don't work. Diets do not work. You need to go through a lifestyle change, which means exercise, which means sleeping enough, getting a handle on your stress, make sure your body is humming, that it's not sputtering, and using the tools that are available to you. So lifestyle style changes is what it's all about. So your weight is really part of this web that we often talk about, which means that your digestion and absorption has to work. Your immune system has to not be in an inflamed state. That your oxidative reductive homeodynamics, which is just a fancy word for reducing oxidative stress or resting, is working well. How do you work on that? All the dark colored stuff, right? The blueberries, the raspberries, the blackberries especially, the pomegranate, the, all the really colorful things, uh, black pepper, there's all kinds of stuff out there. As long as it has color, it's a good antioxidant. Make sure that your detoxification is working. Detoxification system sometimes has to be spurred on by us. For example, heavy metals, it can be so clogged, your liver, function that we have to use something called ultra clear renew. We often do that. We use that sometimes for one week, others for six weeks, others for three months. Phenomenal how we can show heavy metal detoxification with that without having to go through the painfully expensive and long-term chelation therapy that is often promulgated for, um, for heavy metals. We got, you got to make sure that your hormone and neurotransmitters are on track. Without proper hormone levels, your weight will struggle. And you need to make sure that psychologically, spiritually, you are on even keel and balanced. I recognize in today's society that perfect balance is impossible, but it doesn't mean you don't strive for it. We have to strive for it. Identify things that are in the way of that and work on it. And structural and membrane integrity is if your nervous system isn't working well because your spine is not lined up like it is, it will cause nervous system dysfunction huge its impact, whole other topic that we're not going to cover tonight. And membrane integrity is just saying, how are your cell walls doing? Another topic, it's a big, that's a big one. We'll cover it sometime. That's another topic. And
And here we go into next month's seminar, bone health. Bone health is not just about calcium. In fact, that's one of its minor components. And we're going to show you ways that can reverse osteoporosis and show dramatic change in just one year. And I put myself on the line here, but we can beat any drug that's out there just by using what God gave us as far as reversing bone loss, even in the elderly. It is phenomenal what you can accomplish. And we're gonna talk about some of the newest findings that have come from France and other areas from uh, Europe in just the past year and a half. So we're excited about that topic. So, weight. It's not about your weight. It's about how well is your metabolism working? How well is your health? How much muscle do you have? Throw the scale out, feel how it feels here. That's what counts. Eat real food. Be balanced emotionally and spiritually. Go for it. Let's see some real signs for 2010. Recruit the team around you that you need. Talk to Tina. Talk to Leah about exercise. What is best for you? Utilize some of the tools that are available out there. Besides real food and exercise, use Ultramule as a way to boost your weight loss and increase your health potential.